Filipino adobo. This is like, it's like the impossible dish. It is tangy, but it's creamy. And wow, that pork is so lush and tender and mm, all sorts of yum. This is my version of Filipino pork adobo. Okay, so there are loads of different Filipino adobo recipes. My goodness, I've been through so many. This one is a recipe that I like to cook at home with pork. So I've done a chicken one for you guys. You can check that out uh, on my channel. Uh, but this one is a pork and coconut version. So here we go. The first thing I wanna do is talk about the pork itself. So you could use pork belly for this one. That's great as well. I often like to use a cut of pork that's called pork scotch, also called pork shoulder. I've seen it sold as Boston butt as well. It comes from the shoulder neck part of the pig. And the reason why I really like it is that it has some really great connective tissue, some fat, and that kind of dissolves down to make everything really soft and tender and gelatinous and beautiful in the, in the sauce. So that's why I like to go with this one. You can buy it in a big hunk like this, or it often comes sold as steak. So pork scotch fillet steak. Uh, and that will look something like this. So keep an eye out for that. But yeah, as I said, pork belly is good as well. And some nice thick steaks here, because I want nice big chunks. and then some strips, and then some nice, decent-sized cubes here. Something roughly like that. Okay, so get those into a bowl. And then the key technique for any adobo is the combination of like a vinegar and soy sauce marinade. So I'm using just some regular soy sauce here. And then coconut vinegar is the more traditional vinegar to use, but I've done this with apple cider vinegar and even white vinegar as well. So plenty of options there. And now a few aromatics. I've got some peppercorns and some dried bay leaves. All right, let's mix that up. And this is a really simple dish, but it does require a little bit of patience on your behalf. Uh, I'm gonna pop this into the fridge for 30 minutes, and that's gonna let that soy sauce and the vinegar really work its magic and get right in there. Okay, so we're back after 30 minutes. And the next thing is like a little extra step that is optional, but it really does help with the browning process in the pan. So what I'm gonna do is get this pork out and onto some paper towel. And I wanna dry it off because of course, anytime you're doing any browning, moisture or liquid is gonna be your enemy. Uh, so the drier we can get our pork pieces, the more caramelization and beautiful color and all that good stuff, all of that, more of that stuff is gonna happen in the pan. Okay, let's get some more towel and just blot that dry, or as dry as you can get it. Now make sure you keep a hold of that marinade, we're gonna use it a little later. So I'm gonna get a little bit of fat coming from the pork as well, so I don't need too much oil in there. And let's do this in batches, friends. That's gonna get even more browning and more color. You know, it's just these little steps, I think, that really make a big difference when you're cooking at home. Okay, sizzle, just what we want. And as that meat browns, keep it turning. And now if you have a look in the bottom of the pan here, that is your flavor, all that brown, goodness in there, that's what's gonna start to layer our beautiful slow braise. And with slow braising, it's all about layering the flavor. Okay, so our pork should have some nice color. Our pan should also have some nice color. Check that out. Now let's get on to making the rest of this dish. We want some onion.
Now you should have enough fat and good stuff in the bottom of that pan to get that onion straight in there. If it starts to look a little dry as the onion cooks, just add a little bit more oil. Let's see how we go. Okay, just toss those onions around a bit. And I want to add in some garlic. Just a little smattering of chilli flakes here. I don't want this to be super spicy, but I do love the little bit of warmth that you get from a little pinch of chilli flakes. Now to help those onions soften up, become nice and sweet, I'm going to add a little bit of salt here. And again, this is about layering the seasoning, layering the flavour. Now just turn that heat down a smidgen. I want the onions to soften up a little. I don't want that garlic to burn, so keep everything moving in there. Just a few minutes. Okay, that's looking good. Let's get our pork back in there. Now, the coconut vinegar marinade that we saved earlier, I want to get that in there as well. And just some water here as well to give us enough liquid to really braise and soften up that pork. Now, just have a look at the colour of that sauce already. Just that little extra time to get some good caramelisation really makes all the difference. I just wait for that to come to a gentle bubble. I don't want a hard and fast simmer here. I want a really nice, gentle, relaxing kind of bath time for our pork. Put the lid on, just leave it to do its thing for 30 minutes. So let's take a look at what we've got going on in here. Okay, so this is looking good, but I did warn you that we have to be a little patient with this one, guys. Uh, I'm not done here yet. I'm gonna add in a little bit of brown sugar and also some coconut cream. You know, one of the things I find really interesting about Filipino adobo dishes is there's lots of different versions with coconut cream, without. Uh, this one has the coconut cream, obviously, and my goodness, it gets so lush and creamy at the end. I can't wait. Just hold on. <laughs> you need to see the end. Okay, so now's the time to sit down, have a cup of tea, check your Instagram feed. We need an hour before this one is gonna be ready for us. All right, so things are smelling uber delicious in my kitchen right now. Um, I love that little scent of the bay leaf in here, so good. Now, check out how thick and glossy and creamy everything is. Mm. Now all that's left to do is just pile this up into a big steaming bowl. So you could serve this with steamed rice or I quite like a really crusty baguette with this one as well. Just want a little bit of tinkering at the end here. Some spring onion and some red chilli. It's mainly for colour. The red chilli isn't too spicy for this one. Now, the really beautiful thing about this dish is just how soft and tender and unctuously, like, delish the pork is. So we need to do the spoon test, guys. Let's do the spoon test. If you pull out a piece of pork, you've got to be able to get through it with a spoon and just have a look. Ugh, oh, look at how soft that is. Yum. Now, to me, this is one of those dishes that like you don't see getting a huge amount of likes on Instagram or, you know, the photo isn't ridiculously pretty. It's just not. It's, it's brown and it's slow braised. And But can I tell you, honestly, like ugh, the flavor. Well, let's see. Let me let me have a taste and I'll see. Mm. That flavor, it's like tangy but creamy and then you've got that beautiful slight hint of the bay leaf mm. the flavor tastes so complex and then the pork itself is so soft and tender oh, wow it's like wow that's all you need to know mm. amazingly good mm. i really love this version but you guys tell me how you do your version of adobo i know lots of you have very strong opinions on adobo so don't hold back come at me in the comments i want to hear all about it